Hi everyone, I thought I'd make another YouTube video. Um, I've had a few requests for different things since um, and I thought today that I'd just do a quick one on how to deploy a prototype onto Heroku. A few people have asked me about this recently so I thought it was worth throwing into a video as it's a quick and easy thing to do once you know how to do it. Um, I'm going to show you how to do that using the dashboard and how to set up automatic deploys so that it's kind of set it up and then you can forget about it. You can obviously go down the route of of installing the CLI and doing that um, with the terminal each time you want to deploy things, but I, I find it much easier to, to go through the GUI where I can. I'm also going to look very quickly at um, a fork of the prototype kit that I've made since the first video. Uh, so this is hit here on the screen, so we'll run through that in a bit, but first we'll set it up as a Heroku app. So my fork of the prototype kit is already set up on GitHub here, so you can see it's forked from AlphaGov. Um, and it's, it's kind of got the features that were listed on that other page. So I'm already signed into the Heroku dashboard here. Um, what you'd want to do is create an account. Um, I've had one for quite a few years, hence lots of apps underneath here. I think you can have a handful of apps for free by default, and then if you add in your credit card details, um, it won't charge you. It will just, uh, it'll, I think, increase it up to about 50 different apps or so, which is probably enough for most people using the prototype kit. Uh, so we're going to make a new one based on uh, that fork of the prototype kit that I've got. So we're just going to go up here and go create new app. Uh, we can call it prototype YouTube. Uh, we're going to set it to Europe just because that should be quicker. And we'll create the app. So I mentioned that you, you could deploy using the Heroku Git CLI. Uh, there's some information here on how to do that but I'm not going to do that. What we're going to do is click on this here on GitHub. Um, so because I've already done this, uh, it's, it already knew who I am, but the first time you come into here, it will ask you just to kind of authenticate your account um, with GitHub so it knows who you are, um, and then you can search through all your different repositories. So I'm just going to put prototype in here, and there's the fork that I've got. So what I'm going to do is connect to that, and I'll go away and it will connect to the repo that's sitting on GitHub. And what you can do now is turn on automatic deploys. And so you can do this for any branch that you want. And so you might want to, you might even want to have multiple different Heroku apps, one for each branch and set those up to deploy automatically. So if you're kind of prototyping things and you just want to share them with your team, you can kind of have that one up and running on the side while you also have the main research one so that you're not interrupting any research that might be going on. Um, but for now, what we're going to do is just leave that selected as main by default, and then you can enable automatic deploys. What this means now is that any time I make a change and push that to the main branch on GitHub, it will ping to Heroku, and Heroku will then grab those changes and it will redeploy the app for me automatically. So once I've got this set up, I never have to come back in. Um, because this is the first time, um, I'm just going to come down here and you can see again it's, it's looking at main and I'm just going to deploy that branch. And it will start doing that build down there in the background. Um, this is basically doing what when you first grab a, a copy of the prototype kit and you do the npm install, it's, it's doing the same thing. It's going away and grabbing those node modules and installing them for you. So while it's doing that, we can do the, the one other thing that you'll need to do within the dashboard when you create an app is drop into settings over here and reveal the config bars. And so by default, the prototype kit actually requires a, a username and password. Um, and so you set this up in here. So you just put username as one of the keys. And so we'll put that as Chris. And then we'll have one for password. And we'll put is awesome, just so everyone on the team knows. And then we can drop back into activity. And we can see that is still building. So the first time that you do this, um, it can take quite a while. Heroku can be a bit slow on the on the free platform as well. Um, so I don't know, like, I don't have any jokes, but I have a beer. So feel free to go grab a drink. And or I'm just going to skip this little bit now. Brilliant. There we go. So I think... That's finished building now. So if we go up here, you can click on open app. 
that will open our new Heroku app for us. Um, and so we set, the username's Chris. We all know he is awesome. Uh, Ian can save this. So uh, the reason that the prototype kit um, by default asks for a username and password is just so that the public don't stumble across these and, and think that they're live services or anything. So um, most of the ones I set up don't have particularly complex passwords or anything and I'd normally just save them into the browser. Um, I don't intend to keep you in this one though. But they, you can see now that um, that's deployed onto the app. Uh, and that's 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 it. You've you know just deployed it onto Heroku. That's that's all you need to do. Any kind of changes I make onto the main, like I said, I'll just get deployed automatically now. Um, and that that's all we needed. So I'm going to close that and that and that and just pop back into here. And so if if you just wanted to know how to deploy onto Heroku, that's it. Um, I'm going to carry on the video though and just kind of run quickly through the things that I've added into my repo just just in case people wanted to know about those as well. So I'll run down the list basically. Um, what I've done is add a few different config variables um, into the config.js file that you'll find within, within the app folder. So config.js over here on the right. Um, so where before you had the service name and then jump down to, into port, what I've done is add in the Heroku URL and the repo URL. And then the internal flag is here. So it's currently set to false if I change that to true. And then any changes you make to this config file require a, a manual refresh. So jump back across here. Uh, and you can see most clearly that header up there has changed. Uh, so it's, it's removed the GovUK. Uh, and it's just kind of aligned off the title and made it a bit bigger. Um, there's a few other kind of minor style changes. If you want to see what those are, they are in the SAS folder. And if we drop into application, oh no, if we drop into patterns um, and then go into internal, uh, these are the changes that I've made. Um, so they're, they're quite minimal, um, but they're just kind of quick, easy things that I find that I tend to have to do whenever I work on any internally facing products. Um, so the, the next thing is the prototype phase banner. This one's pretty obvious. It's at the top of the page and it's pink. I've gone for pink because no one ever uses the gov pink from the palette. And, you know, I just feel like it's a bit wasted. So pink. Um, and this is just a flag to say, this isn't a real service, it's not production code. I find it's helpful just to kind of have that up there in place of like the beta banner, uh, just on the prototype so that it kind of sets people's expectations. Um, next on the list then are the link in the footer to the Heroku app and the GitHub repo. So these are down here. So it's the uh, these two links and it corresponds to these two things in here. So I've actually got the examples. If we just reopen the two things I had, if we grab the repo URL, pop that in here, and grab our app URL, save that. Um, if we look down at the links down here now, this Heroku one will open the page that you're currently viewing um, in the Heroku app that we've we've now put the URL in for. So that's really useful if you're kind of building quite a big prototype and you're several pages deep and you just want to um, share that with someone. Um, if you if you pop this open, it will open the same page that you're currently on, um, but but port it across to the Heroku app for you so you can just share that. And you'll notice that link doesn't display when you're up on Heroku either. So that's only for when you're running it locally. Um, and then the prototype repo is here as well and that will just open up github for you and it's just it's a useful kind of documentation thing um the next one is kind of the the big feature and it's the only one i've actually written some documentation for um so if we just click into here um the feature and versioning system basically um allows you to keep all of your different versions within the one app and it kind of sets up the folder structure for you a little bit. Um, there's some routes that have been baked in to make this work. 
Um, but very briefly, I mean, there's there's a description in here, but if we jump across to my code editor, um, do, do, and look into views, you'll see that there's an example feature um, that's got a version one, and within there, there's there's a setup default question and a roots.js file, and outside of the version one, it's an index. So anytime you have a new feature, and I've kind of, I've called them features, but, um, you know, like you, you could use this at any kind of level. They could be during an alpha, completely different prototypes. Um, if you just duplicate that folder, it will automatically pick up any folders that are included in the root of views um, and then any version numbers within there. And it will start kind of just building out that log for you. And then the index page, there's an example set up here um, where you'd just be able to kind of jump into those. So if we come back into the prototype, go to the example feature you can see that index page here um, and then so within the version one you've then got I've, I've put an underscore just to kind of keep this at the top you've got the roots file and so any of the roots that you want just for that version within that feature can be stored here there's still the global roots file but it means that um, you won't have tons and tons of things within that file um, everything that you need for that version will be kind of self-contained. Um, there's some variables that I've kind of popped in here as a, um, as a useful starting place. So within this, if we go and view the prototype, um, you can see that at the moment the service name is just example. Uh, you can override this per, per version and per feature. Um, and that's useful, again, like if you're in an alpha and you're trying out a bunch of different ideas, um, we can we can rename the, the service name, come back here, refresh, and it'll change. If you if you don't want to do that, if you want to stick to the one that's in your main config file, you can just not include that and it'll come back to whatever that service name was as well. So let's go back up to here. Um, and that's that's kind of it for the for the versioning system. Um, like I said, there's some write up here and then there's also a little call out to Craig Abbott who, honestly, I stole this from him because Craig is awesome. And then, so the next thing that I've added in is just a date filter. So I find I use this quite a lot, particularly for internal facing tools. So if you've ever got any dashboards and things like that with, with deadlines on, it's a really useful way to keep the prototype looking fresh. So the thing that I've done here is say that uh, I changed this earlier when I was running through the example. So some, tomorrow's date won't be the fifth, tomorrow's date will be the seventh. But if we, if we jump into my index page, you can see that that's because I've changed this over here to subtract. If I change that to add, that will now update to the seventh. So there's a bunch of different things you can do with this. Um, it's it's the thing that's installed within these brackets here. So the word today isn't actually required. Um, you can pass this some data. So if you have some inputs capturing a date, you can pass those into this and then run the date filter stuff on it. Um, or you can just create one and by default, the, the date will start with whatever today's date is. Um, so the, that's the filter that's up there and then you can start passing in different options to it as well. So I've got a couple of things happening here. So I've got one that's now saying add one day, but I mean, I can change that to whatever I want. So that's 10 days. And then this is what is formatting the date. So I've got the kind of standard gov style date on here, but if you needed to, to make that a bit shorter, you can do that as well. And this is running with um, what is called Nunjux date filter. Um, so I don't think this is running anymore, but it still, it still works perfectly well. Um, and there's some examples in here of, of what you can do with it. So like I said, you can, you can just pass a, a sample date and that'll just be today's date. Um, you can start formatting it or adding things. And this in itself is based on moment.js, um, which, so this links out to, there's a, a large set of date formats. So you can look at all the different ways that you can present the date. And then there's also a huge set of methods that allow you to manipulate that. So you can, you can do kind of things like next week or in, in a year and things like that all as, as different things, or you can just kind of stick to the standards add or subtract a number of days or months or years. And so that's it for the Nunjux date filter. And then the last thing that I've added recently, um, and this was just thrown in really quickly because I was working on something that needed it, is I've pulled in the publisher components and uh, some of the styles for, for the guide. 
and so this is actually a prototype that I've been working on recently um, where we're looking at gender recognition certificates um, and we've just been trying to tweak some of the guidance and testing on how that would work um, and so it it basically means you can set up some some of the guide things and so you get the the standard WK styles that you get for the contents and and for the pagination and stuff down here the format of the copy looks a little bit different in some cases as well um, and I've dropped a note in just to say that you need to add guide onto onto main so we look in here you can see what I mean by that so on on the main tag I've just added the guide class if we remove that it just breaks some of the styles a little bit so you can see like the titles don't work uh, and that's it so I hope everyone enjoyed that I hope everyone got a beer as well um, I hope I'm not slurring too much and uh, I hope you all have a great weekend thanks a lot for watching <laughs>